I'm hitting record now. So uh, I think we're at week. I mean, I don't know, I'm going to stop talking about weeks. Just like yeah. the podcast, you know, don't name the episode. Just in case we want to switch the order around. It's like the pandemic, you know. I, I you know, it's pandemic or uh, you know, quarantine day four thousand seven hundred ninety six. <laughs> you know, it just kind of it doesn't matter anymore. Not really sure what day it is, but yeah. it's. I don't know. In Nebraska, we've lost all track of time because the sun has stopped shining for like two weeks straight. Yes. Yes. And he keeps so, whining about that because I'm in Texas and the sun, sun hasn't stopped shining for yes. two weeks. I got, my, I got my, I a, out of here. That's the worst part about being in a global society is like somebody posts on Facebook or on um, social media like, hey, anybody know where I can find a pool? It's supposed to be 97 tomorrow. And I'm like, screw you guys. It's like 56 <laughs> here. And I like the 50s, but you know, in moderation it's almost june here i've got a pool and i got things to do uh we were out camping and it poured like two inches on us uh saturday afternoon so I, i'm ready for some sunshine and so skip's down there like enough sun kind of get some clouds <laughs> yes and um it kind of like is like i don't know it's an analogy for what's going on across the world and it's like some people like new zealand they're opening up now yeah. um uh, Texas, we're they're opening up. Nebraska, we're opening up. Other people are like, I'm so tired of being inside. Mm -hmm. You know, some people are in complete lockdown. Some people are going outside, and just we're it's an interesting social experiment because people are just in different places right now. Yep. Yeah. And let me use that to segue into our um, our new uh, little initiative that we're we're launching. Uh, we're going to look at uh, creating a short term peer group uh, with you guys being, you know, we need a handful of people in it. Uh, we are going to limit on the size. So if you're interested, you need to hit us up pretty quick because we, we don't want to make this a big group, but we're going to five. Yeah, I think is what we're looking at. Uh, so it's, uh, it's the remote work initiative or the reintegration initiative, you know, kind of a couple of ways we want to approach this. And what we want to do is we really want to capitalize on our shared experiences uh, and, and, and knowledge. So uh, Virtual C will, will lead this group and we'll come together. We can talk about, you know, what's working, what's not working, what are clients doing, maybe pick up some uh, tips on, um, uh, you know, any of the, the federal assistance that's available uh, or just general, you know, uh, ways to kind of get some leverage. So we don't want to limit this to anybody outside of the U.S. We want to make this, a, you know, an opportunity for anybody because, you know, it's really cool. Different perspectives. You know, our clients uh, down in Australia, they're, they're dealing with their, their federal initiatives as well, but they're different than here. But, you know, it, in the end, we're all trying to overcome the same challenges. And hearing those other perspectives is, I think, really, really valuable. Along the way, we are going to develop the, uh, the 3.0 uh, report. You know, we had the, the remote work. What, would we, what did Danish call that when he first launched the remote work readiness? All right. And then so uh, and the VEP, we immediately modified that. Uh, and we helped create the first one. But we also modified that. So there's like a 1.2. And then we just recently released the 2.0 version of that where we're capturing, you know, hey, we're at home now, you know, let, let's, let's get some data collected on these data points. And then our version three on that is going to, we're going to pivot at that point and kind of try to leave the COVID stuff behind and just focus on, you know, remote work, uh, the remote work initiative, you know, it's, which is going to be huge, um, you know, business continuity planning, all of that going forward. So that, uh, that will be an opportunity for you to, uh, you know, get in. I'll, I'll do some of the work on that one. I'm really, you know, put myself out there now. I'll, I'll be the, the, the coder or whatever on that. And, and we'll get this report up and running and really make this an actual item. So probably a little bit long for a commercial there, but um, if you're interested in that, uh, that peer group, uh, message uh, us, uh, coaching at virtualc.biz. And we get that started, we're working on uh, all the details of that uh, the last couple of days. We want to get and this. That and this is Skip's baby. You know, he, he had this, this was a great brainstorm idea. We were trying to figure out like, <clears throat> like what can we do like, like a short term thing? Cause we're in such a weird place right now as a community and as people like, so what's, what's something we can offer up. And so reach out to coaching at virtual uh, Skip is still working on like what the, 
clear design of it's going to be, but the goal is to re like this whole reintegration. Like, how are we yep. getting there? Like, and then getting feedback. So the peer groups, this is going to be a discussion. This is not going to be something where we just tell you what to do. It's going to be a discussion. And hopefully at the end, we'll have this nice, well-designed idea. Yep. And we really want to go through the broad spectrum of stuff. I want it to be obviously very, uh, strategic, uh, very business engaging with clients. So we'll walk through, you know, some, what are some things working, how to structure those conversations. Uh, but Adam, actually you mentioned something the other day that, you know, I think we really need to do what we need a, a technical list too. I mean, we got PCs that have been off the network for an extended period of time. And, you know, my, my time in active directory is a long time ago, but I've, you said something and my you know brain went, Oh yeah. I mean, this PC has been off the network for this long you know, depending on how we're doing our remote connectivity, has it checked in? Has its, uh, you know, has its credentials in AD expired? And we're going to have issues. Hey, with people just bringing the laptop like in and plugging it in. Are tombstones still a thing in AD? I don't know, but yeah. I, if if this were 13 years ago, I'd be checking. Yep. <laughs> and so, I mean, th there's going to be a whole list of stuff, and uh, so we'll collaborate on that as well. You know, and I'll I'll condense those down and. Uh, you know, we can help each other out. And I think, uh, so, be very so are you still thinking the goal of this is going to be an updated, like, uh, readiness report, like something that's, that's going to be a collaborative effort. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's the, what I'm shooting for in the 3.0. I mean, cause I've already got ideas on that, but you know, my ideas are based in part on a lot of my own experiences, obviously, but a lot of my conversations that I'm having with you guys today worldwide, but, uh, I would really like for those to be, a little more specific, uh, you know, so if we got the opportunity to collaborate on something, I think we could come together and, and create a very impactful document. So if you yep. want to participate in that, please uh, let us know. I think it'll be an exciting time. And I, you know, I really like this because it gets back to our uh, community driven roots. Almost everything we have built has been requested by you guys or feedback mm -hmm. from your teams and your employees and coaching engagements we've had. So whereas a lot of this is our, us living in our brains, it's also just us trying to connect dots from MSPs all over the world on what are best practices? How do we do things better? You know, what isn't working? And whoever the five uh, companies are that join this group are going to be part of like one of those leading edge uh, reports that eventually we'll try to like share out. But um, it'll be up to those five to like really get that input and help design it so they get on the front end of that so that when you're doing your lessons learned in July, June, that you have a cutting edge report that you can use. Yep. It's a great way to uh -huh. upload work on the skip too. There you go. It works. All right. Sorry. I'm just clicking over here to get my thing on. So with that, uh, yeah, just email in, let us know who wants to come. Uh, I think there'll be an, an extra cost associated with it. I don't think we figured out what it's going to be yet. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll figure out what it is. So if Skip can keep eating his Cheerios at home. Uh, no, <laughs> seltzer water, seltzer water. Yeah, you soda water. Seltzer water. Just need, just need my soda water. Just need your soda water. Yeah, there, there is just soda water in here, really. Yes, there is. That's why you get a little lispy towards the end of the podcast. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, and then the, the, you know, anybody who hasn't been checking out the podcast lately, it's been going really well. We have a lot of people subscribing to it. We have a lot of hits. We're almost to like where we can call ourselves one of the top podcast launches in the country. Uh, so please be checking that out. Um, we have a fun series coming up where we're going to be interviewing different MSPs around the world. And so we've got a, a nice list of I'm hoping to get a total of four to five. We have three signed up. Um, so if you're in a, a con another country, if you're outside the US, then I would like to hear from you. And if I have not reached out to you yet, uh, it'd be your opportunity to get on a podcast, be able to self-promote a little bit, uh, be able to tell your clients, hey, look, I was on this podcast, raise awareness for how you're uh, playing into the global community. And so there are, some, there are going to be some great conversations coming up. We have Australia, uh, we have South Africa, we have uh, Canada so far, and uh, probably should get somebody from the United States. So yeah, yeah. And uh, the conversation's all around how is how is the pandemic affecting your area? 
what's going on, uh, any advice you have for upcoming businesses. So be looking forward to that in the podcast. Yep. And you might pick up some tips to how to do things better for you, or at least it's been really interesting for me and Skip. Like when I'm talking to somebody in Sweden or uh, New Zealand, it's just interesting talking to them because they have a different approach than we do. Yep. Uh, even Texas and Nebraska, we're very similar <laughs> in many ways, but we still have different approaches to how we're solving this problem and what businesses are doing to deal with it. And so this kind of goes to the whole humanized thing where like you can't treat all your clients exactly the same because they're not. Right. And we see that firsthand here. There are a lot of commonalities. I mean, if you're a Cisco shop, you're a Cisco shop. But when it comes to what are you doing with your technology, what kind of product are you producing? What kind of uh, margins are you dealing with? Uh, when you're dealing with a global com community or even a state to state in here in the US, it's different or industry to industry. So you got to talk to your clients and get that feeling just like we are with all the members to the, to the group here. What are we seeing? How is it impacting you? And what can we do to make things better? Uh, with that, I'm going to segue into like what I promised to talk about today. And that is the foundations course. If you are not going through the foundations course, you need to be going through it right now. Uh, not tomorrow, not, you know, in three months, you need to be going through it today. Uh, we put a lot of work into this HIT foundations class. It is five days. It is a smart goal. I've talked about this before, but you need to assign it to yourself. And I'm going to put it in the chat here so that you guys can click on it if you need to. And assign it to yourself and pick a Monday to start on it. Before you start, have three clients ready to go. And so in this particular situation, have three people to do like a lessons learned with or just a strategic session. You're going to do it over Zoom. You're going to do it via phone call. And it's going to be a quick little like 40 minute to an hour long session. And then you're going to present to them your findings. But this, this will give you everything you need to know. It is, it is specifically designed for people without time. So every one of the videos are 10 minutes or five minutes. Skip had to redo his like 30 times to get it under 10 minutes. I did. I did. And I tried not to talk really, really fast. I just tried to change the content. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like the culmination of like four years of work. You know, my original version of this was 90 days. And then I was like, wait a minute, now that we have the humanized IT and the, the reports are already built, somebody could do this in five days. It, it is very doable. Some Skip suggested that for some of you out there, you might want to do like the first Monday of the week or the, uh, you want to do it on Monday, do one day every Monday. And that way it takes five weeks, but it gives you more breathing room. I think you should do it all in one week and then do keep rinsing and repeating until you've got all your customers lessons learned done or a strategic session done with all of your customers. As you can see, like you'll see like a 30 minute video here. That's because we created supplemental videos for those of you who want more guidance. And if you go to the Wistia channel, there's uh, even more videos. Like every topic here has a lot of videos on it. So if you don't know what you're doing, these videos will show you. The longest video is day four. And the reason why that's the longest video is because that's when you're actually going to present to your clients what your recommendations are. So whether you're doing a lessons learned this week or you're doing a strategic session, uh, like an annual strategic session, you want that first session to be discovery, the second session to be recommendations. And that recommendations is going to be, here's how we're going to get you reintegrated with your uh, company. Here's how we're going to reintegrate your product process. Hey, we've been doing all these operations while you've been away. Here is what you need to know. And here's how we're going to help you be successful and get you ahead of your competition. And so I spent a little bit more time on that one. I, that one actually is distilled. I think I did three or four takes on that. It took me an entire day to get it down to 18 minutes. <laughs> and I was like, I can't go any for faster. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's the longest video you'll have to do all week. And then we have some final comments here on day five, where you're actually just kind of exporting things to your PSA and making sure you have products lined up. And then you'll just do this again the next week. <clears throat> this is everything you need <clears throat> to yeah. deliver a VCIO program today. You can promise a client today that you will have a meeting with them in three days and you will have everything you need to know. The beauty of having those three assignments set up first 
is that it um, puts that fire under you. Yeah. We all work better yeah. under deadlines. Otherwise, we put it off until someday. Someday, yep. Th this smart goal platform gets rid of someday. And, and don't overthink those three clients. Uh, yeah. You know, if you guys heard me talk about segments, any, you know, we got, or, you know, ABC or whatever, you know, don't, don't pick your biggest clients. Uh, just pick some kind of medium size, some kind of in the sweet spot, somebody that you, you know, already know a little bit about and you've talked to. Uh, make it easy on yourself is what, I, what I'm getting at because you're going to build up momentum. Uh, you're going to learn a little bit through this. All right. So, it, you know, you don't want to necessarily try to use this as a, you know, sales engagement for that client that, you know, you're brand new with and, you know, you're trying to look all, all shiny and perfect, right? Uh, you need someone who knows that uh, you're not perfect like everybody else on the planet. But, uh, you know, so, so don't overthink it. Just, just roll with three clients that you're comfortable working with, uh, even if it's a smaller one and you go, Hey, you know, guys, I'm going to kind of give you this, uh, you know, you, you don't really pay us enough for me to really do this, but I, you know, I feel strongly about you guys and, and I'm going to give you this service. FYI, that's a, that's an upsell. All right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, so, you know, walk through this process, uh, and, and kind of get your feet underneath you that again, the real goal in this is that you move yourself from, all the others MSPs out there that go, hey, we're strategic. Hey, we, we can help your business, you know, be more profitable or whatever. All right. And that's just marketing fluff. I mean, nobody's actually doing anything. And what you'll be able to do is be able to say, hey, we're a humanized IT shop. We have a framework that we follow that helps your organization capitalize on technology. We can be your strategic partner. And here is how we do it. You're able to walk it out, show stuff, and really go to the next level. Because I think that's, that's one of the key differentiators. And really, honestly, if you look at some of uh, the MSPs, you know, you guys, a lot of us on the call, you're doing a lot of these things already. I mean, you have some processes and you have some things, but communicating to your clients what that value is always seems to be a little bit longer conversation. Am I right? So you know, if, if we can help you and give you some tools to condense that, to productize that, I think you'll have tremendous success in, in you know, managing and, and, you know, really exceeding in your marketplace. Okay. Well, I'm full of commercials today, aren't I? Oh, I'm sorry. I was watching I'm... something else over here. <laughs> <clears throat> No, I mean, uh, I just, I really find that the, the, the place where most people fail is just like they, they get just distracted. Um, or you guys are busy. You guys are smart people. And you're dealing with customers. You're dealing with clients. You're dealing with internal issues. And you want to get this up. You know it's important. But you got to keep it at the forefront. And so the, the important part is that you set some deadlines for yourself. And when it comes to your first three clients, I, I would go with the beer test. Who would you be willing to have beer with after this is all done and get some real good feedback? Because those are the ones that are going to help you craft your image. Like they really don't like how you didn't look them in the eye when you talked. They really thought your microphone sounded like a screeching owl. You know, whatever it is, you want to hear back on how did the cadence go? How was the feedback? I got excruciating feedback when I first started doing presentations. Join a group that's going to help you present better. Join an improv channel. Um, go to a Toastmasters. Something that's going to help you present better. But with your first three clients, find people that actually care and are going to give you honest feedback. And then your next three, pick some, maybe some at-risk clients or maybe pick mm -hmm. a, a bigger client and win them over with these new, with these new things you have. So <clears throat> that, that is what I recommend for my process. Three trusted, three uh, important, and then start mixing it up as you go forward. It's a great way to help at-risk clients kind of get back into your good graces. It is, yeah. Uh, this is the podcast for those of you looking for it. It's everywhere. Uh, you can go to Apple. Uh, it's on iTunes or uh, Apple Podcasts. It's on Spotify. It's everywhere I can think of. So this is just Anchor. This is If you ever want to do a podcast for your own MSP, 
you can go to Anchor, and if you drop your file, it'll start distributing it based upon like you need to have like a logo, you need to have some relevance to it so that the approval process goes quickly. It takes about three weeks to get your podcast approved. It's a great way to reach out to your clients if you have important things to say, or you know, you know, recommend they listen to our podcast. We 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 represent you guys. We are out there as a brand to make you guys look better. Like, oh yeah, this is this is our brand. This is our community that we're a part of. So yeah, it's not a virtual C. Virtual C is uh yeah, they're they're nobody. Humanized IT is the brand that you guys the humanized IT is built to be white labeled. It is something that you should that you should all uh you guys should all be able to say as a phrase, we are an HIT company. We are a humanized IT brand. This is what makes us different. Yeah, I actually have an order out for shirts, but it's evidently taking longer than I thought because of the pandemic. So um, we, have, we have the commercial, which I was going to show you guys here in a second. Of, of uh, It's just, oops, that's Skip. <laughs> yeah, I was going to show that. Ah! The um, the commercial that we use on our Humanize IT website. See, green screen. Yeah, we have. I don't think we have like green, green screen. Yeah, so Adam and I, I think it's hilarious that we have a green screen background applied to our green screen, so that we can make videos for post editing. <laughs> Longer conversation. Yeah. So, so like. <laughs> here's the brand to the site. I'm not, I'm not promoting virtual C here at all. Yeah. Um, I do have like, here's what our community looks like. Here's kind of like some quick things so that if somebody said, Hey, we want to get some cons consultation, they can click here and they can kind of see like what it costs. Um, I would like to get this to be more like community driven. So this was just a first draft of the site, but the idea is the humanized IT is something that you should be able to uh, use as a differentiator as an MSP. I'm pulling up the commercial right now. Yes. Yeah, and just remember, you guys all have access to this uh, through your, your current memberships. <coughs> so um, as we get new members that will come in, you know, again, we're just a bit of a branding, but you know, our mission, our goals, uh, Oops, uh, our content, all that has to uh, stay the ch stayed the same. But uh, moving forward, you know, we will see the humanized IT more. So that's what new members coming in uh, will come in through. But you guys are, are part of our program. You're part of our membership and our community. So uh, this is all available to you guys. It should look familiar to some of you seeing the first commercial. This is all about how you're going to help the company. Lots of key words here. And it's all reflects what you're gonna do with your reporting, your um, auditing and your conversations. So if you, know, if you want, you can throw this up on your website today. It's, it's in the managed service platform. I think I've got it under tools marketing or something like that in the <laughs> uh the program so let's see here yeah i mean it's, a little, the, it's a little different for me because i've got the vendor account here yeah. you know so um i started a long time ago one reason why well one of the 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 genesis of our current cyber security assessment went back to a security report i was trying to put together when i was working with an msp and you know we were moving down this path and we you know obviously and this is several years ago but you know cybersecurity was you know, really ramping up and we wanted to have an ability to sit down with our clients and provide an objective uh, cybersecurity evaluation. All right. And what I, what I realized though, for most MSPs, they're just sending out one of their, one of their good engineers, right? And, and they're just providing an individual of opinion on, Hey, are you secure or are you not? And it, it was a bit arbitrary and it may have been really valid or it may not have been. And I began sensing that our customers, our end customers were picking up on this. They're like, you know, I know that guy that came out is really good, but he's like the only security guy that I know. Is he like 
the smartest of them out there or is he the dumbest of them out there? I mean, being a little derogatory, but you know, and they just didn't know. And so they were looking for something. And so that's, that was the genesis of the NIST based cybersecurity assessment. So we could come out and say, Hey, Mr. Customer, here is a cyber uh, security posture for your organization based on this industry standard. So the humanized IT is very much in line with that sort of prospect of you going to your clients and go, Hey, we're, we're a great IT management company. We can really help you out. And your clients looking at it going, okay, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, maybe you've been my, my IT guys for the longest time. Is there somebody out there that's better than you guys? And I just don't know it. Uh, you know, and, and when you guys come to them and go, Hey, we're, we're part of a standardized process something that's been vetted through multiple organizations. Uh, these are the, the framework key points. These are the pillars that we, we follow. Then your clients are going to feel like they're getting a much more complete and thorough management of their, of their IT system. So uh, I, I encourage you to use humanize IT in that sort of conversation of, Hey, it's more than just our skill sets. We, we're great. I mean, you can keep saying that. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying knock that out at, at all, you know, keep saying, Hey, we're awesome. You know, we walk on water in our sleep, you know, but at the same time, we do all this stuff within the humanized IT framework so that you provide that reassurance to your clients that everything that they need is being taken care of. I walk on water. I, what? I don't know. Yeah. You know, as long as the water is only, you know, a couple inches deep, I don't have any problems at all. <laughs> so the, the idea is that, you know, some people don't have a large marketing department. Like I pay a lot of money to marketing to help us with our branding and strengthening ourselves, uh, getting podcasts out there. And when you join the community, it's just like, it's just like traction. It's just like EOS. You become yeah. something bigger and you're part of this. And if you're in the Humanize IT program right now, you're one of the first hundred companies. And so you are cutting edge. There are 20,000 MSPs in North America alone. And you're one of the first hundred to be part of this program. Even with the, the pandemic going on, we're still growing as a community. We took a little hit as people just freaked out and they just, they go, okay, well, let's just back off for a second. Um, yep. But even then, you know, people maintain their membership and, and they're trying to craft this this uh, image of themselves as being somebody who's going to help their clients and they're through this stuff. So you are on the front end of this stuff. <clears throat> and I want you to take pride in that. And that's what we, instead of it being promoting virtual C's brand, we wanted to have the humanized IT brand out there with the commercials and the PDF and stuff like that. So you can say you're part of this community. You're not just an MSP. You're part of a larger system that is amazing and is really cool. And this is the new way to deliver services. Yeah. I'm looking at the, I'm just looking at that, make sure I got the videos uh, added to the marketplace here for everybody. Yeah. The last thing is for today, so I don't eat up everybody's time. Uh, so I got the commercial, the HIT Foundations course, and uh, the new email format. Uh, I know this is boring, that's why I saved it for last. Maybe some people are really excited about it. Um, we revamped the email format for the weekly email, so it's gonna be a little bit more standard going forward should be easier for you to get to like the video. It's all gonna follow that same format. So if you don't wanna read Adam's uh, ranting and raving, I type these things manually every week. So it's a, it's a cup of coffee and I have my typos here and there. I should have my editor look at it more often, but I always forget. But we try to put some effort into making sure that the community updates kind of like that newsletter of what's coming up, what do we need to know, what happened last week, what's happening next week. This is the same kind of cadence you want to have with your customers. I do recommend that you do some kind of newsletter like this for your customers, especially right now. You want to over communicate yep. with your customers. Like, hey, what happened last week? What happened this week? And what can they look forward to? And keeping that touch base with them that's not an automated email, but something that you actually handcrafted, maybe send out to 100 people, and that's okay. But something that you actually typed and meant something because everybody's being inundated with spam and with like cute little gimmicks. What people need to know is like, what are you doing to help them? What is your MSP doing to help your customers? And if you look at how I've kind of divided up that email, you see like there's, there, it's really easy. Like what can they do today? 
What is something that you've done for them in this past week? What's coming up this week that you're going to do for clients? Like this coming week, we're really looking at rolling out our patch schedule. So look for this. Um, or this coming week, we're looking at doing extra sessions with clients and action items. Sign up, for a, sign up for lessons learned right now so that yeah. they can do X, Y, and Z. It's a great way to establish a relationship with your customers if you do it right. So if you send out scripted automated emails like a drip campaign, you're not going to get as much engagement. But if you handcraft an email with like a funny story in it, with something that kind of like, hey, this is the story of the week or something like that, you're going to see engagement from your customers and that, that better level of communication is going to get you a higher level of engagement. But I just want you to know that like, every piece of communication we send to you guys, we expect you to be doing that with your customers. We are trying to live as examples of how you should retreat your customers. Anything to add, Skip? No, yeah, I think, uh, you know, being able to, um, you know, send out those sort of messages with your customers to engage them right now is really important because, uh, you know, your clients are, are struggling to find the new norm, right? I mean, everything is up in the air. What's it going to look like? You know, what's my state at or my, my county or my city level? You know, there's so many variations to that, you know, and people are trying to build out their game plan. What, what are they going to do? And when you can come in and offer some advice and offer some, maybe just some structure so that they know, hey, when I do this, my, my IT guys have got it all taken care of. They've got, they know what's going to happen. They know when I, when I tell, Hey, Ellen, we're going to, we're going to start going back to the office. My IT guys already know what's going to do. You're going to be all right. That we've got our checklist set up. We're ready for y'all when y'all come back. And, and when you do that, all of a sudden they see you totally different. Again, it goes back to our old business model, of, you know, moving into the MSP business model where we move out of that break fix. Right. And we, and we move into the proactive area. This is an opportunity for you guys to shine in proactiveness. So, you know, we need to start putting that together. We need to be building the plans. Don't wait on your clients to build the plans and then email them over to you and say, Hey, this is what we decided to do. You need to do it. And you look over that and you go, well, shoot, half of this isn't going to work. Some of these products I don't even sell. Uh, you know, it just, it's going to go badly for you. So get out in front of that. Yeah. The, the one action item for this week really is get into the foundations course, go through it, even if you just browse through it, but I would highly recommend you take it seriously and try to get three clients done with that course. Yep. Um, you know, Sorry. it will get you more successful and at the very least get three, uh, lessons learned sessions set up so that you can talk to your clients and get that going. Even if you don't like put it into a report, just get a conversation, get three conversations with the clients going. You can have a bet. You'll have more success if you use the, the course, but you know, get that new feeling going. Use this time to change. Everything's up in the air. You can create a new narrative for who you are and how your client engagements go. Use the disruption and people on their off kilter to redefine how you treat your clients and how they see you. Now is the time and you can do it. And if you need any help, just reach out to coaching at virtualc.biz. We'll help you. We will log on to a webinar. We will do whatever we can to make sure that you come out ahead. Yeah, that's one. Let me throw that extra point in there too. So, uh, you know, there's been some recent updates to the managed services platform <clears throat> tool and, you know, I think there's probably a lot of resources out there and how you use, each one of those updates, but by deploying the HIT process and following the, the information we have in the coursework, you'll actually see uh, a complete end-to-end uh, -end solution of how we utilize each one of those tools. So uh, we went through, we updated all of the reports and we really tried to maximize the capabilities of the platform so that you can see how, how, it, how it will work out. So in our examples there, we've got lots of information in there. So to Adam's comment there of, you know, hey, if you, if you just at least walk through the courseware, uh, you'll, you'll be able to see how we put into action and how it works. You may have a, you know, a list of reports that you're using now and you want to, may want to go through the courseware and that will allow you to see how you can leverage those existing reports in a new model, in a new framework. So that there is some, some additional 
I guess, content feature elements of that. Yep. And again, we're, we're here to help you guys be successful. We're not here to give you a gimmick or a, a checklist. We're here to walk with you. That's the difference. We really want this, this humanized IT to be, this, this, this treatment. Virtual C is very um, committed to giving you what you need to differentiate yourselves and have better conversations so that you can change the way IT is done. With that, I will let everybody get going. You have 19 minutes back to your day. There you go. See you, everyone. I'll talk to you later. Bye.